What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Thank you for clicking onto this reaction. I hope you're looking forward to it just as much as I am. If you haven't already, head over to the content creators page. That link is in the description box down below. If you haven't already and you're enjoying our content, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but we're gonna jump straight into this one. What happened in Rome after Caesar's assassination? Let's go. The conspirators had assassinated Caesar, supposedly under the impression that by removing a tyrant, order and true republican rule would be restored to Rome. If this was their intention, then it was horribly misjudged. Of course it was misjudged, like Caesar had just filled a problem with, with a vacuum hole. He just filled that hole up and now you've just made a new vacuum hole. So of course it's just going to cause more just turmoil after the civil and gallic wars like just, what followed what, the what death of caesar thinking? was not peace or a restoration of the roman republic it was the last civil war of the republican era by the end of it a man with more power than caesar could have dreamed of mm. would be leading rome into a new era the roman okay. empire okay welcome to our series on the post caesar civil wars with Christmas coming, you're probably looking for a perfect gift for your loved ones. Well, don't look any and generals and using the code Kings and Generals. This Octavian could look a bit too green for me. <laughs> As Caesar's dead body lay at the base of the statue of Pompey, chaos erupted. Senators, unaware of who was involved in the plot or who the targets were, ran from the Senate, fearing for their lives. The conspirators, some of whom had wounded each other, also rushed out, brandishing their blood-stained daggers mm. and proclaiming the death of a tyrant. All the public saw, however, was the leaders of government shouting and panicking, some covered in blood and others wielding weapons. In this chaos, Antony, who had not entered the chambers, was able to slip away in disguise, barricading himself in his house. Yeah, I bet he was absolutely petrified of what's going to happen to him in the aftermath of this. Um, are they going to come after him and anyone else who Caesar was close to? Um, and again, the public, just the public scene. You imagine nowadays, right? Just, just whatever, whatever country you are in, however your government is run, imagine that whatever your main, like, like for us over here, it's like the Houses of Parliament, whatever your main government building is, where your politicians go, imagine they just come out and they're just covered in blood. Some people are holding a weapon up and like you just saw it you would go into such a mass panic like like i wouldn't be able to comprehend that i'd stand there in shock i think if i saw something like that so of course it's going to cause so much turmoil within the city when this happens some uninvolved senators saw an opportunity to align with the conspirators and seize daggers and boasted of having taken part themselves the group merged with Decimus's gladiators stationed outside of the theatre and mm -hmm. went to the centre of Rome, announcing that a Brutus had once more rid Rome of a king. The public, however, was not won over. Caesar okay. had brought a short period of stability to Rome mm -hmm. after a long civil mm -hmm. war, and now senators were marching through the streets with armed gladiators. The public was scared. Many not even like soldiers they were armed gladiators if caesar's veterans were in the city and there was a general fear of what these veterans would do to add to i mean completely understandable you imagine if you fought for caesar for all your life he gave you everything and you found out about this you wouldn't want to defend his honor come on this terror lepidus who had since heard the news of caesar's death had gone to Tiber Island, where his soldiers were stationed. Mm -hmm. He then marched them to the Campus Martius to await Antony's arrival. Okay, yes. They wanted vengeance, but agreed that they could not wage war in the streets of Rome. Instead, they decided to bide their time to await the conspirators' next move. The conspirators reached the Capitoline and blockaded themselves on the hill. 
heralds were sent to again proclaim the death of a tyrant. In response, the public shouted back that all they wanted was peace. Cinna, who had been named Praetor by Caesar, stepped forward and threw his official garb aside, saying it had been given by a tyrant and was thus illegal. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So he's flipping on him. That is interesting. Agree, um, like, the, obviously, the, the people were so happy with Caesar because he'd done what he wanted to well, which was sort of cement himself as this popular figure within the populace. And so obviously when this did happen, I can imagine they were absolutely fuming. He praised the conspirators, but the public remained unconvinced. Dolabella, who Caesar had picked to be consul for when he left for Parthia, announced that he would take office as consul immediately. He claimed to have had knowledge of the plot and praised the conspirators' actions. Oh. The approval of a consul encouraged Cassius and Brutus, who began negotiating with Dolabella. Interesting. They once again insisted that their actions had been justified, and suggested that Sextus Pompey, son of Pompey, be recalled to Rome, along with others exiled by Caesar. Mm -hmm. They next sent messengers to Antony and... So you see why they, like, because that's the reason why they done it, was for their own power and their own political reasons. So, of course, that's what they're asking for. Lepidus, arguing that what was done was done, and that all that they could do now was continue working for the people of Rome. Mm. The Caesarians, still hungry for revenge, were nervous, particularly of Decimus, who owned the gladiators and was governor of Cisalpine Gaul, putting him in command of a significant army. They could not risk putting themselves at odds with him and agreed to negotiate. Okay. Antony, who was still consul for the year, ordered that the Senate be summoned. The Senate convened, with the conspicuous absence of the ringleaders of the conspiracy, despite them having their... Oh, the absence! So they weren't they there. assured by Lepidus and Antony. Oh, I see, I see. It's a trial and they didn't want to turn up because they were scared. The I see, I see. Despite them having their safety assured mm -hmm. by Lepidus and Antony. Cinna, however, was present in his Praetorian attire, which he had previously denounced as being given by a tyrant. The public... This Cinna is just looking like the biggest flip-flop in the world. Outraged at this hypocrisy, attacked him. He was almost killed by the mob, but was saved by Lepidus's soldiers, who escorted him to his house. <laughs> it's what you get. People see a hypocrite and a flip-flop and they don't like it. The Senate was divided. Some denounced the conspirators, a larger mm -hmm. portion praised them, and others took a middle ground, simply wanting peace. It was initially proposed that a vote be taken. If the majority found Caesar to be a tyrant, then his laws would be voided. Before this vote could be taken, however, Antony stood and pointed out that Caesar had appointed many magistrates for the next five years. Okay. If Caesar's laws were illegal, so were these appointments. Ah, uh, and I bet you 99% of those um, senators had their positions appointed to them by Caesar, so they all needed to now change their position to keep face and to keep their position how jokes how absolute jokes the, the conspirators did just put themselves in danger and like the thing with it is like you you also like took out caesar before there was anything solidified for you to take over it just by killing him like by killing him at this point in time you still had the senate who could argue against you and the whole political thing there wasn't a solidified emperor or single dictatorship so that what could happen is you could have a smooth transition of power it seems like they didn't think about that at all the the the, the state the roman state at this point in time was in such a turmoil point because obviously caesar was trying to do what he was doing so he was getting rid of the senate but he wasn't fully solidified yet so by taking it over at this point, what what really could you do? You know, there was no sort of um, real, it seemed like there was no real plan of what comes after. Um, to legally run for consul, and whose only claim to the consulship was Caesar's appointment, 
immediately changed his position, claiming to be horrified at the idea of honouring those who had murdered Caesar. There you go, just flip-flopping about again. Antony also pointed out that Rome was full of Caesar's veterans, mm -hmm. and that they would likely not take kindly to Caesar's laws being repealed. Many of the laws pertained to the veterans, including providing... Antony's putting in work sorting this situation out. He is putting in some political work. ...for their retirement, and voiding these would almost certainly lead to a revolt mm -hmm. by some of the most experienced soldiers of the Republic. Finally, Cicero took the stage, advocating moderation. He pointed out that seeking vengeance would only beget more violence, and that their duty was to move forward in a way that was best for the people. His solution was simple and effective. All of Caesar's actions as dictator would be ratified, mm -hmm. and the conspirators' lives would be spared. Okay. Antony was willing to agree. Trying to do a Caesar move on him, isn't he? He's trying to do some Caesar trickery. We can forgive you on this, this, and this. Agree, on the condition that Caesar was given a public funeral, ah, as that his will be read in public. Interesting. All parties agreed, and a compromise had finally been reached. Following this meeting in the Senate, the conspirators addressed the Romans from the Capitoline. Calling themselves liberators, they claimed that Caesar had robbed the Republic of its freedom by assigning magistrates for the mm. next five years, and had committed sacrilege by imprisoning a tribune. The irony of this is not hard to spot. The senators, including the supporters of the liberators, had just confirmed that Caesar's magistrate positions would be upheld. <laughs> so they moaned about those same positions that when Antony brought it up, that was the reason that they stopped. Oh my God, hypocrites. Ah, oh, hypocrites. Ah, oh, I hate when people are so hypocritical. Oh my. They had the opportunity to revoke these privileges and had denied it. Yeah. Moreover, though Caesar had indeed imprisoned a tribune of the plebs, the liberators had murdered a dictator, a far more serious sacrilegious offense. Brutus and Cassius also promised to give land to Caesar's veterans. Although, as Antony had pointed out, there was little choice but to appease the veterans. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, we'll give them some land. No, no, you don't have a choice. You have to give them the land because they will kill you otherwise. Like, <laughs> don't think that you're, you're, you're doing some favour to us. You have to do this. You have to. <laughs> The crowd was assured by the two men that they at least seemed to be speaking peace rather than further mm -hmm. war. With the official pardoning of the liberators made public, Cassius, Brutus and the other conspirators finally agreed to come down from the capital, okay. but only after Antony and Lepidus agreed to send their sons as hostages. Wow. As has been decided earlier, Caesar's will was read to the public. He gave his private gardens to the people to be used as a public space and gave each citizen in Rome 75 drachmae, roughly two months' wages. His primary... Wait, what? Wait, what? He gave every single person two months' wages. How could that man afford it? I mean, okay, he was the leader of Rome, but, but did that come out of his own pocket? Or did that come out of the government's pocket? Two months' worth of wages back in those times to every single citizen... That's insane, right? That's absolutely insane. Citizen in Rome, 75 drachmae, roughly two months' wages. His primary heir was the grandson of his sister, Octavian, a blood relation, who was only 19 years old. Mm -hmm. Octavian's life had so far been uneventful. He had made his first major public appearance when he gave his eulogy for his grandmother and had asked to join Caesar during his African campaigns, but had been prevented from doing so by his mother. Instead. Wow, he was sheltered for a long time, yet he's going to be such a significant figure. He had been allowed to join Caesar during his Spanish campaign, but had been too sick to take part in any meaningful way. While Caesar's will was being read, Octavian was undergoing military training in Illyria, alongside the six legions Caesar had picked for his Parthian campaign. Weren't they like a, a loyal... Um unit to like a yeah a loyal unit to caesar and didn't he have a loyal commander sort of trying to teach octavian everything i believe ah uh, because so it come out of octavian's basically because obviously he would have got the money from caesar but it still come out of their own pocket not the government's 
out. Hold it. Ah, every citizen in Rome, not every person in Rome. Good distinction. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Not the whole country, just the citizens. And again, I'd imagine back then it was a lot more difficult to get citizenship. Okay, yeah, 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 that makes a bit more sense. Not blowing my monkey brain as much now. Not expecting this sudden change in power, wealth and prestige. Perhaps even more shocking was Caesar's secondary heir, who was to inherit the wealth if Octavian had died before Caesar, Decimus Brutus, one of the leading assassins in the plot. Upon hearing the will, the people began turning against the liberators. Yeah, I bet they did. I bet they did. I hope Brutus was feeling guilty. Caesar's body was brought out with the crowd lamenting loudly, mm -hmm. and the stage was set for Antony to have arguably his most impressive moment in Roman politics. Okay, politics. go on. He read all the laws passed by Caesar that would now be upheld, giving particular weight to those that related to the people specifically. Mm -hmm. He read all the titles that Caesar had been granted, protector of the country, father of the country, and emphasized the sanctity of Caesar's offices. Antony broke down into tears and then lifted the bloodiest toga of Caesar on a spear for all to see, bringing the crowd to a boiling point. Finally, he unveiled a wax replica of Caesar with 23 stab wounds. At this point, the liberators hurried from the forum and the crowd erupted into chaos. Yeah, I would understand why they erupted and Antony seemed to do that on purpose. The crowd rampaged, burning down the Senate chambers where Caesar had been assassinated and hunting for the liberators throughout the city. Most either fled Rome or barricaded themselves in their homes with armed guards. One man, Cinna, who happened to share his name with one of the conspirators, mm. was mistaken for being the Cinna the actual who Cinna. involved in the plot oh, and was no. quite literally torn to pieces. And I think he was actually torn to pieces. I can imagine that he was torn to pieces. Mob mentality. It's so scary. Holy shite. They seized Caesar's body, carrying it to the capital to burn and bury him with the gods. But there they were stopped by priests of the temple. Instead, they took Caesar's body back to the forum. Benches, parts of stalls, any wood mm. that they could get their hands on was piled into a huge pyre and Caesar's body was burned atop it. As his body burnt, people flung dedications into the pyre, including weapons, armor, jewelry and clothes. He was really loved by his people during that period of time, wasn't he? With one speech, Antony had turned the public against the liberators mm. and forced them to flee. The only ones who remained were Cassius and Junius Brutus, who as praetors of Rome only held power within the city. Antony was the master of Rome. Oh wow! Wow! What a smart play by Antony. Wow, he knew the, 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 the speech would cause enough ruckus and fear for him to be able to step in and take power as a very smart manipulative play there very smart manipulative play definitely one of the best moments in in Antony's career however Antony worked quickly to win them over a man called Amatius claimed to be the grandson of Gaius Marius and thus related to Caesar and mm -hmm. had been a leading figure in the riots on April 13th Antony had Amatius executed without a trial, and this won him the support of the Senate, but severely damaged his standing with the plebeians, oh. who took to the forum in protest. In mm. response, Antony dispersed the crowd with soldiers, then proceeded to execute the ringleaders. In less than a month, Antony- Holy! Holy! Man's just getting rid of everyone. Everyone! Oh, you're arguing? Dead. Oh, you got a problem? Go. Oh, you? You got to go. But I understand it. There's a lot of chaos going right now. He just needs to stabilize the situation. Um, justifiable or not, uh, that's for you to decide. He had alienated himself from the plebs and aligned himself firmly with the Senate. To further secure this alliance, Antony abolished the office of dictator and even suggested that Sextus Pompey be recalled and named commander of the seas. Oh, okay. 
that's an interesting twist. Again, he's just trying to. A lot of these senators are really. A lot of these people in the in these sort of positions are really trying to like sit on that balancing of of oh, I'm going to do this, but I'm, I'm going to give you this crumb. The Senate eagerly accepted, and even Cicero was for a time won over by Antony. However, it did not take long for Antony to begin abusing his power. Yeah, of course. He began spending Caesar's vast fortune, which was in his care to distribute to Octavian and Caesar's other heirs, and fabricated various legislation, purportedly written by Caesar, to further his own agenda. Okay, yeah. Yeah, now you're gonna fuck up. Like, as if you're just, like, making bullshit th legislations and just passing them off as what Caesar done. Now you're just, you're playing with someone else's legacy. He paid huge gifts to win cities and foreign princes to his side, began naming new members of the Senate, and amassed a huge bodyguard, perhaps as many as 6,000 Caesarian veterans who had fought alongside Antony. Oh. Lepidus, who was the other leader of the Caesarian party, mm -hmm. had been advocating for revenge, but Antony was quick to placate him with the marriage of his daughter to Lepidus' son, and appointing Lepidus as Pontifex Maximus. Oh, Antony bro, really? was focusing power into his own hands, mm -hmm. making Cassius and Brutus wary. They yeah. had no supporters among the plebs or veterans, and the Senate was now being increasingly won over by Antony. Both men subtly excused themselves from politics in Rome and retreated to their houses in the country. That's it. They just they had to give up. They just lost all their power, so they, they just had to go back home and give up and do absolutely nothing. From here, they sent messages to Decimus in Cisalpine Gaul to ready his legions, and to Trebonius in Asia and Tilius in Bithynia to mm. begin raising funds. By this point, Antony effectively held as much power as Caesar had done, and rumours circulated that he was seeking a province with an army to command. Some senators were still not supporting him though, which encouraged Dolabella, the other consul for the year, to oppose Antony whenever possible. Antony, okay. however, was aware of how ambitious Dolabella was, mm -hmm. and encouraged the young man to request the command of Syria for the following year, including command of Caesar's planned Parthian campaign. Rather than put this to the Senate first, as was the custom, he Antony just went and done it. Dolabella to take the new proposed law straight to the people. Oh, I mean, what are you doing? What are you doing? Wow, he's just like avoiding everyone. This man is the mistake. This man is the problem. Syria had been assigned to Cassius, however, and the Senate attempted to block the proposal, but Antony was able to force it through. The law was passed, and Dolabella was thus given command of Syria and the legions. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Antony then requested the Senate to give him the governance of Macedonia, a province Caesar had assigned to Brutus. With Dolabella being given such a rich and powerful province, this seemed a relatively small demand, Macedonia having no legions, so the Senate relented. Okay. Cassius was compensated with the governance of Crete and Cyrenaica, while Brutus was given Bithynia. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Octavian had still been in Illyria, debating his best course of action. Okay, boy. Some encouraged him to we take control of the army that he'd been training with and seek revenge. His parents, however, wrote to him to come to Rome as a private citizen in order to attract as little attention as possible, Smart. claim his wealth, and retire. Octavian knew he had to be in Rome to understand the situation, and so he left the army and sailed across the Adriatic. When he arrived in Italy, more accurate information regarding the assassination and Caesar's will was sent to him. Ah. Still, he was uneasy, many encouraging him to denounce the adoption by Caesar completely. When he arrived in Brundisium, however, huge crowds flocked to him and veterans greeted him as Caesar's son. Mm. Octavian immediately accepted the adoption officially changing his name to Gaius Julius Caesar. Hearing this, more and more soldiers, veterans and sympathizers flocked to his side. There we go. Along with them came more news from Rome. The appoint I mean, what are you going to do? What are you actually going to do in that situation? You're going to turn up there and then people start flocking to you and start supporting you. And I imagine he was quite young at this point. 
like it's it's like kids who get money and like get famous nowadays like of course your ego and of course your head's gonna get absolutely massive so of course you're gonna go yeah he adopted me yeah i'm gonna be the new guy get out of the way you guys are supporting me let's go let's do this like of course you're gonna do that arrangements of antony and dolabella the proposed recall of sextus pompey and other exiles and more with his increasingly large retinue, Octavian now made his way to Rome. However, as a private citizen, Octavian mm -hmm. had no real power in Rome. I see. Antony was the man with all the power, and more importantly for Octavian, all of Caesar's possessions, including his vast fortune. In order to have any real power in the city, Octavian needed this money. He not only had Caesar's legacy of 75 drachmae to each citizen to distribute, mm -hmm. but also political allies to repay and others to bribe. Of course. Octavian thanked Antony for giving Caesar a proper burial, but criticized him for not having seized the moment when the populace was on his side to hunt the liberators down, and for having given too many concessions to the Senate, Brutus and Cassius. Mm. Finally, he asked for the gold that Caesar had amassed for his war against Parthia in order to pay the citizens of Rome, and also asked Antony to either give him a loan from his private purse or from the treasury to cover his other expenses. I think that's fair and that makes sense. While Octavian would immediately put his properties up for sale in order to pay these debts. Antony was completely taken aback. Octavian had no power, had no leverage, and really had no right to be so critical and making requests from Antony, so he was quick to refuse. He pointed I mean, didn't 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 Julius Caesar say he was the next heir? And I know that doesn't really stand for much because obviously there was still the Republic back then, but still like he's saying no power, no wealth, and like a few other things. He has no wealth, but he has plenty of power. If you have support from people around you who are willing to just go to so many lengths for you, then I'm telling you now, you have power. You have a lot of it, you know? That, like it or not, the senators were the representative body of Rome. Caesar had not, Antony made clear, left Octavian the Roman government in his will. As such, neither he nor Octavian had any right to overrule the constitution. Regarding the money, Antony found Octavian's requests laughable. Antony mm. claimed that though Caesar had been a rich man, much of his wealth was distributed across a number of assets, many of which were now disputed by various individuals. Some of these oh, had been seized wow. after his assassination, Others had not yet been liquefied into cash. In reality, Antony had already spent a significant mm. amount of Caesar's fortune and had deliberately slowed down the process of Octavian's adoption to further handicap the young man. He knew he was going to be a problem. And then the moment Octavian turned up in his face and asked for all these things, I think Antony knew the jig was up. He knew that his time was done. Antony made it clear that once Caesar's assets had been assessed and the many individual disputes resolved, Octavian would get a portion of the remaining money. Octavian left in a fury. Mm -hmm. Octavian and Antony were immediately at loggerheads. Yep. Lawsuits Instant were rivals. against Octavian, contesting a number of the assets he had inherited, as some had belonged to men who Caesar had exiled, but had uh, now been allowed to return, while others claimed that some of the assets were seized by Caesar unjustifiably. Mm. Antony, his brother Gaius, who was a city praetor, and Dolabella presided over many of these cases and ensured that Octavian got the worst of it. Octavian was forced to put all Oh my god, you'll be fuming. And Anthony, what are you thinking? You're just pushing this man down one direction, one path. Of course he's gonna come back on you. All of his inherited properties up for sale in order to find the money to settle these various cases. This went on until two men, Pedius and Pinarius, appealed to Antony. They had also been given part of Caesar's wealth in his will and were worried that there would be nothing left after the various mm. lawsuits. They pointed out that Caesar's will had been clear, and that the Senate had agreed to uphold Caesar's actions. Antony conceded somewhat, allowing Pedius and Pinarius to take their share of Caesar's money now, and okay. he held Octavian's share, saying that, that though the Senate had agreed to uphold Caesar's actions, 
It was also not proper to ignore the disputes of many individuals just for Octavian's sake. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's really just trying to he's just really trying to take all the power for himself. Anthony, I can't wait for you to die. I'm sick of your bullshit. Get off my screen. Pedius and Pinarius quickly took their share, planning on using it in turn to fund mm -hmm. Octavian. Okay. Nice. Antony and his brother were due to hold games, which would be done in Brutus's name. The aim was to offer support for Brutus and Cassius in order to hopefully get the people to reconcile with the two, thus so now... giving the brothers two more powerful allies in the Senate who would be indebted to them. Wow. Wow. It's showing you how Antony was willing to flip on Caesar in an instant to make his own power and and secure it for himself he's now trying to so so he used caesar's death to get him into this position and now he's trying to get the people to have more favor with brutus his brother uh, brutus and his brother to again make the population like him more but they're just going to tell that he's going to flip flop about and that he's just a snake get off my screen Antony I'm done Octavian however opposed this he sold all his properties at the lowest price he could used what personal money he had and the money from Pedius and Pinarius to finally pay Caesar's gift mm -hmm. of money to the people Octavian had gone through so much to get this money that the gift was now seen as more of a gift from him than from Caesar. And I hope the people know that, because if so, then that will just, oh my God, that solidifies him so much more. When the games nice. were held and the heralds paid by Antony began to call for the return of Brutus and Cassius, many of the people, now thoroughly won over by Octavian, mm. stormed into the arena stopping the games until Antony's heralds were forced to stop their appeal. Octavian had gained a victory. Nice, when Octavian. When Cassius heard of what happened, they were furious. This had been their last gambit at returning to Rome through popular support. Now they planned to go to Macedonia and Syria and take those provinces by force. The men who had professed to killing Caesar to protect Rome had now completely abandoned the city leaving it contested between Octavian and Antony. Oh, it's all brewing for another civil war, isn't it, guys? However, one man who had long claimed to be a saviour of Rome did stay, Cicero. He had been quick to realise that Antony was simply hoarding power for himself. Yep. And despite the danger to his life presented by the powerful Antony, he now aligned himself with Octavian. Okay. It had only been six months since the assassination of Caesar, and the stage was once again. So the problem with it is the process for a dictatorship has already started, so that is going to finish, and that's going to be the end outcome. Again, set for war. In Rome, the relationship between Octavian and Cicero and Antony was almost at a breaking point. Meanwhile, the liberators were starting to gather their forces. Decimus in Cisalpine Gaul, Trebonius in Asia, and Brutus yep. and Cassius en route to their respective provinces. In Sicily, Sextus Pompeius, still not yet officially recalled to Rome, had amassed a sizable force. The entire Roman world was once again mm. about to be plunged into civil war. No, it in really our next is. Video, we'll talk about the beginning of this civil war, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see it. And you know I have, and I hope you guys are subscribed and hit the bell icon as well. I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this series. I think I'm going to have to get the uh, Roman Total War game on. I'm going to have to. Uh, I was playing my Total War game the other day. I think I'm going to try and stream it soon.